Now while my beer is brewing, I'm going to sanitize and assemble the Wonder Brew unit. Now I'll take a, a sanitizer I got from the local home brew store, from us or from wherever. I'll take a little bit of that, pour it in the bucket. All the stuff has been sanitized, but then I'll fill it with hot water, let that sit for a little bit. I'll also put some sanitizer in this bottle and spray any areas that I can't get to with the, with the sanitized water. Okay. Then I'll proceed. My hands have been sanitized too. You want to do that also. Um, first, I'll take the air tube and we'll take this part, put it through here. Now, if you'll see, there's a double O-ring and a fitting here. All these fittings can go half NPT, but you don't need any kind of Teflon paste or tape on for this because the O-rings provide the seal. Now screw that into place. Doesn't have to be tight. And it will leave it out so the gauge can come out. The next part is the gauge, which has Teflon paste applied to the outside. I sanitized it. And what I'll do is screw that into place. Put it so the gauge reads outward like that. Next part I'll grab is the pressure relief valve. See, it has also the double o rings. Screw that into place. Okay. Next part is the CO2 shutoff valve. And what this is used for is once you're done fermenting, you can shut this valve and pre it prevent any more CO2 from being lost. Um, so we'll screw that into place. That's there. With this open, it's got to be open while you're fermenting. It's very important to make sure this stays open for the first week or so or else you'll build up too much pressure. Next part would be the dispensing valve, and this is used to dispense the beer, and it goes in this tap port. None of these things have to be all that tight. Put that down. All these parts will be changing, so, you know, uh, we're going to be constantly improving them, so don't be upset if you, you get different parts because we're always trying to improve the product and we may not have time to make another video before you see those next ones. But the next part would, it would be the yeast extraction port, which right now is the same as this port, and we give you an extra one of these also if you want to hook up CO2 to put the unit in your kegerator or something like that. But put that in. This one we're going to want to close. We'll put it like that and put it in a closed position like that. Next part is your, this is a support ring which makes sure that there's plenty of uh, support for sealing the gasket. Next part is the gasket, and it just goes over the cone, just like so. And that's pretty much most of the assembly until we get the wart into the container, and then we'll go from there. So now my beer is boiled for about an hour. I'm going to shut off the heat, and I'm a very you don't want to jostle the beat the wart at this point because you'll oxygenate the wart which is bad when it's hot. So I'll gently take this and I'm going to move it to the laundry tub and we'll let it chill to about 100 degrees. So now I've got my chilled wart. It's down, I know it's down below uh, 80 degrees just by feel. And I'm going to pour it through the strainer just in case I have uh, anything in there but I, I don't think I even need the strainer. But now I'm not going to pour the uh, hot residue in, I'll leave that in the 
bottom of the bucket. pitch the yeast. First I'll sanitize the outside of the package. Then cut it. Now pour the yeast into there. Okay, then I'm going to use some keg glue here to grease the gasket. Take this, put it upside down into the beer. And I'm going to connect the pump using this, this port. This port is for sucking it down. This one is for op opening it up. So, and that threw down perfect there. Okay, then I'm going to move the ring up into place and try to get it clamped down evenly on both sides. Okay, and then I'll then all you do is bring these nuts in, leave a little bit of a gap there. We'll take it do the same with the other side. Then I'll take a uh, 7 16th inch open end wrench and finish these up. Okay, so crank these till they're tight. Uh, you can pull these all the way together, or there could be a slight gap if they seem like they're tight enough. We haven't had too much problem with leakage on these. Okay, now I'll go there. Okay, I also want to show you, before I even flip it, this port here, it's very important to either to have that open, or have it off because uh, if you leave that open or if you leave that closed or leave it in place this port right here uh, you'll you'll blow out the safety bung in the top of the, the unit okay but the next so the next thing is to turn it over it's about 50 pounds so we're gonna take it flip it over And now you're ready to start fermenting. Um, you just uh, keep in the temperature, if it's an ale, 65 to 70 degrees, or just look at your recipe and follow that. Or if it's a lager, you know, you're going to chill it lower. Um, probably by the next day, it's going to start building pressure. Okay, now this is the unit that we started, and it's three days later. 
The pressure is exactly perfect where we want it. It's sitting right at 10 psi. I haven't touched any, any of the pressure release, so that worked perfectly. It's accumulating a little bit of trub or trub on the bottom and probably a little bit of yeast at this point, which is great. The, the uh, bottom of the buckets bulged up a little bit, which is what we want. We've never had a problem with any with, with, with this, never had one fail. Um, there is the, the safety bung that's on top that if we did build up too much pressure that would blow. But that's it. Now you can uh, start sampling. Right now it'll just taste like sugar water or, or malt water, but it'll, it'll progress and slowly yeast will accumulate here. And that's it.